Hello, thanks for coming. This is awesome. I see a very uh, full room. If you guys ha you have an empty seat next to you, can you raise your hand? Okay, the guys around, if you want to sit down, there's still like 20 empty seats. Um, well, thanks for coming to this talk. Thanks for coming to RailsConf. Uh, it's been amazing so far. Uh, a lot of great talks, and I had a lot of fun. I hope you had a lot of fun as well. And we are also here to celebrate that Rails 5.2 uh, was released uh, just a week ago. Um, if you have any contribution to uh, the Rails code base, can you raise your hand? Can everybody else give a clap to all these <laughs> people <laughs> who made it possible? <laughs> I'm not going to go through everything new in Rails 5.2. I'm just going to go through one thing. But it's a really exciting and you know pretty interesting thing, and it's called active storage. And um, you know because this is RailsConf, I'm not just gonna tell you what it is. Uh, I'm just gonna go deep inside the code without scaring you too much. And so you can also learn how things uh, work. And it's a perfect segue to the previous talk. So then I can invite you all to. Uh, become contributors to the Rails code base because uh, you know once you go past the stage of this is just magic and you look at the code, you might realize that it's Ruby and it's classes and objects and you can also contribute to that. As a matter of fact, Active Storage is the newest framework, so possibly you might still miss some documentation or uh, maybe you can find some issues. So it's the perfect place for everybody to start, in my opinion, looking at the Rails code base. Uh, my name is Claudio, and uh, um, English is not my first language, so uh, you can just go and download the slides if you want. They're already available there. It might help you uh, follow. <laughs> uh, Speakerdeck.com slash Claudio B. Um, so before I get started, I just want to uh, comment that this talk is about active storage. Uh, turns out I work for a storage company, but it's not it's not cloud storage. Uh, it's actually we come to your place and we you know take the stuff that you don't need. Um, we wrap it up, take pictures, barcode, take everything to a warehouse, and then you can ask for your items back with a Rails app, of course. And it's called Clutter. <laughs> you can check it out. And we're based in LA, and we're hiring. And that's my pitch. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna talk about active storage instead. Uh, clearly, uh, I can't uh, talk about everything, but there is a great place to start even after this talk, and that is the official Rails guides. So at uh, guides.rubyonrails.org, there's a section about active storage, and uh, it goes through all of it. So it's actually uh, really well written, so I invite you to just go there. And by the way, all the URLs that you see are on my speaker deck, so you don't have to write them down. And this is uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, first of all, what is active storage? Uh, maybe you've heard about it. Maybe you haven't. You're just curious. I'm going to give you an introduction on what it is and how to use it. And you're going to see that it's really, really easy to use. So then you might wonder, well, how, how does it work? What is it made of? And that's going to be the second part of the talk. I'm just going to go through the main classes of this library. And Finally, how does it all work together? And I think you know one of the reasons why I'm giving this talk is because when I looked at the code of Active Storage, it's really it's really elegant. It's really a good uh, code base. And sometimes people wonder, what can I look at? What is a like a library that is a good starting point? So this is a, you know my advice, and you can look at that. And so, enough with the introduction. I think I'm gonna get started. Okay, so what is Active Storage and how to use it? Active Storage is a library to upload files. Uh, if you have a web application and you want users to be able to upload files to the browsers, this can be a good option for you. It's not the only one. In the past, there have been other third-party libraries like uh, Paperclip or Carrier Wave, but um, Active Storage ships inside Rails by default, so you already have it there, so you might want to give it a try. And so how do you use it? How do you let users upload files? 
I'm going to show this in a brand new app. So there, there are no dependencies. I'm just going to create a scaffold, a brand new scaffold Rails 5.2 app, and then have an upload. So this is how you just create a brand new app in Rails. You do your Rails new. I call this app catalog. And I generate a model called cat, of course, because <laughs> it's Rails Conf. So I haven't seen too many cats in this conference yet. So this is my, my part for that. So every cat has a name. And then we create the database. We migrate. And we run the server. And um, if you've ever used the scaffold in Rails, you know that uh, it generates forms like this one. So you have a form where you can add a new cat to your uh, application. So this is the baseline. We already have a form. Now we want to add a field for people to upload an image. So there are three steps. The first step is actually to just add a field to the HTML. And this is pretty much HTML. We are adding a file field. I call this picture. You can give it whatever name you want. Uh, photo, cute little picture, uh, cat cute picture, <laughs> and then a label. That's, that's really it. There's a new field called picture. Now, in Rails, whenever we have a field uh, in a form that we want to uh, uh, submit to a controller, we need to tell the controller about this field. We need to whitelist this uh, new parameter because of uh, the strong parameters in, in Rails. So what that means, in your controller, you uh, already have these params require cat permit name. These are all the params that are accepted from the form. So all we have to do is to add picture as another uh, parameter that the controller is going to accept. And then the last step in the model, in the cat model, we have to add a single line of code. We just have to say cat has one attached picture. And that's it. That's literally all you have to do. If you do all of this, then you um, have this form. People can upload the picture. The picture gets uploaded. It gets attached to the cat. And as a matter of fact, if you uh, have a show page, you can just do image tag cat.picture, and that's going to display the picture right there. Do you think it's awesome? <laughs> OK. A round of applause for <laughs> active storage. <laughs> I think it's pretty awesome. <laughs> also for the cat. So you know this is the basic usage, and but it doesn't stop here. There is a lot more that you can do with active storage. Uh, here are some of the other things I'm not going to really talk about here, but you can still do. Imagine you have this cat dot picture you can actually display a variant, like a black and white, 90 degrees flipped image. You um, only need a library like Minimagic in your gem file, and it does this. It creates another file like that, black and white. Um, it's not only for pictures, I mean, for images. You can also have, like, has one attached document, like a PDF file. And as a matter of fact, if you have a PDF, you can even display a preview, like an image, that renders the first page of the PDF. And you can resize that, 100 by 100, for instance. And of course, of course, if you have a cat, you're going to have many videos of your cat. And so it's not just has one attached. You also have has many attached that works in a similar way. And for each video, uh, you can extract metadata, the size, the angle, the duration of the video. So there is more about how to use active storage. There's variants, previewers, and analyzers. And so read the guides. And also, if you just Google active storage, how to use uh, active storage, probably the first result is going to be a blog post by Vladimir, who's right here, and by Alex, by uh, Evil Martians. And they have this very uh, comprehensive uh, blog post about how to set up all these um, features. So uh, really, um, you know, if you want to start using it, it's pretty easy to start. And if you want to do all these uh, variants and previewers, um, you know, please uh, feel free to do this. Just try in a brand new app, and then see if it works in your production app. OK, so far so good. 
because this was the easy part. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. So now, um, how does it work? Like, what's inside the code? You know, like, um, you know, what uh, we were talking about in the previous talk, you know, you use the routes, but then you want to see how they work. So you open the, the, the code base. So here we're going to go through a similar journey. And uh, we're going to look at the classes that are inside Active Storage. Um, well, to look at the source code, how do you do that? Rails is open source, so the entire source code is on GitHub. So you can just go to github.com uh, slash rails slash rails. There is an active storage folder, and the entire code is right there. Another way to open um, source code, if you have active storage um, library in your app, you can just do bundle open active storage, and it's going to open the source code in your editor. You can actually do this with any, uh, any library that's in your app, any gem. OK, so you open the source code, and there's a bunch of files. Where do you even start? So this is, um, this is what uh, you, you should remember about the important classes of Active Storage. There are three main classes. Uh, there's Active Storage Service, Active Storage Blob, and Active Storage Attachment. And I'm going to explain what they are. So next time you hear about a blob, you know what exactly we're talking about. Uh, so let's start with Active Storage Service. The service is the part that deals with just moving bytes. You know, you have an attachment, you have a file, just moving the bytes, like from memory, from your browser to disk, that's all the service does. So I tried to uh, <laughs> make a picture of this. When you upload the cat picture from the browser, so an HTTP uploaded file, there is a component that takes those bytes and stores them, for instance, on your local hard disk if you're in development, in a certain folder, slash storage. So that's the service. That's what the service does. It moves bytes from memory to disk. Active Storage Service is an, a real class. And the code looks like this. Uh, it has other methods, has upload, unload, delete, and so on. These are the most important ones. And funnily enough, this is the implementation. So if you call Active Storage Service upload, it raises an error. This is actually a pattern. What this is is a, an interface. This is basically saying there is not just one service. There are many subclasses. And you can implement whatever service you want, but they have to follow this pattern. So you can't call Active Storage Service directly. You can call one of its subclasses. And all the subclasses, they implement an upload method, a download method, because they can be implemented in a different way. So this is just uh, a pattern you might have seen even in other Ruby code bases, that there is a class that doesn't actually implement the method. It just describes what, what methods are there. But now let's look at one of the subclasses. This is called disk service, and it's the one that's by default. So in the examples I showed before, I was uh, running an app locally, and disk service is the default configuration. So disk service, the upload, file, the upload method, it takes this I.O., this file, and really all it does, it's calling the Ruby methods I.O. copy stream that just copy, copies bytes, because this is the service that stores a file on your own disk. So it's doing anything else that taking the bytes and taking the stream of bytes and copying to a certain location. The location is this make path for key, which uh, by default is inside this slash storage folder in the same Rails app. The download method is also using uh, Ruby uh, libraries. So it's, uh, it's reading the content of the file from the same path. So this is a pretty straightforward implementation. Takes the bytes, move them from memory to disk, and the other way around. So this is great for development. It's going to store the image on your computer. But for production, you probably don't want to store the image locally. You want to store it on a cloud solution, like, for instance, Amazon um, AWS S3. And the good thing about Active Storage is that it already ships with a service for S3, so you don't have to build it. 
this is another class, it's the S3 service. You see that there is still an upload method and a download method. They're just implemented differently. This object for key put, those are all methods that come from a gem called AWS SDK S3 gem that it's included. So it's just using the methods to move bytes to and from S3. So if you want to use active storage with S3, all you have to do is you go to the uh, configuration file. It's called uh, storage.yaml. By default, it's going to say service disk. That's the default. You just change that with service S3. And then make sure you have the credentials for a, for a bucket on S3. And then it just works out of the box. And so this is pretty convenient. And um, Active Storage actually uh, also has support for uh, Microsoft Azure and uh, Google Cloud Storage all inside. And if you have your own cloud solution and you want to build a uh, service for that, you know, just make sure you follow this, this pattern, th this uh, interface, and then you can build it. And maybe you can build your own jam, or maybe you can do a pull request to integrate it in the code base. How are we doing so far? Good, <laughs> good, thank you. Oh, you can applaud if you want, I'm not gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so service moves bytes. So in the case of the cat picture, we have the bytes, but we don't know what those bytes are. We have no idea that it's even an image, it's just bytes. So we need some place to store the information. Where is that thing, what it is? And this is what the blob does. Same example when you upload this file, the blob is the part that's actually storing the key, so you know where the file is, the original file name might be useful, the content type, it's a JPEG, and the byte size. And um, so this is the part that stores a reference to the file. And it's actually storing it in the database. Active Storage Blobs it is a table in the database. So this is the schema of the table, and it reflects what, what I was just describing before. It has a key, a file name, content type, metadata, byte size, and the checksum to uh, ensure that the uh, image is not corrupted. Now, the, you, know, you might be wondering, OK, where, where, the, where does this table come from? We did not create any table. Um, so this is uh, one of the you know, things uh, that Rails helps you do. Because the first time you ever use Active Storage in your app and you try to upload the file, you will see this page. And it says, could not find table active storage blobs. So active storage needs that table to work. But also, it tells you what to do. Uh, to resolve this issue, run bin rails active storage install. And this was actually my own <laughs> small personal contribution to active storage. But this is really the only thing you have to do only once. So the, you need these tables. The first time you try locally, you might see this page. Then you run this command. This command adds the migrations to your app. You run the migrations, and then the tables are there. And then you don't need to do it anymore. When you uh, deploy it to production, the migrations are not going to be there. You run them, and that's it. So only once you need to make sure that your app has these tables, and then that's it. And um, just as an approach, this is a little different from other uh, file upload libraries that instead require you to add fields to every single model. So let's say your cat has picture. They say, well, you need to add a field called picture to the cat. Then you have the dog model. It says you need to add it there. Active storage is a little different because everything is, is here, is inside this table. So you only have to do that once. So I think that's pretty convenient. So I'm just going to show you one method of active storage blob. And this is the upload one. So what it's doing. Uh, as I'm saying, it's, as I said before, it's uh, extracting all this information. So it calculates a checksum from, from the bytes. And then it extracts a content type, either from the extension or the MIME type, or just the, the first bytes. And then it extracts the size. It stores all this information. And then it calls the service to actually store the file. And then uh, here's the last class. So we have the bytes. We have the blob. that. It's telling us this is an image of this certain size. But we're still missing a part. We are missing the fact that this image is the picture of this cat. We're missing the association. So that's the last part that it's missing, to associate 
the blob with what it belongs to. And this is what active search attachment does. So this is the, uh, you know, the last part. When you upload a picture of a cat apart from the service and the blob, there is going to be a new attachment that says, this is a picture. It belongs to the record cat number four, for instance, and this is the blob number two. So it's really just building this association. So then when you call cat.picture, it knows where to go. And active storage attachments is also a table, and it's the other table that the migrations uh, add to your app. And this is the entire schema. So it has a name, a polymorphic record, and then a blob, and this index. So uh, what this index is saying is if you have like cat number four, it can only have you know, one picture for this blob. Um, and that's, that's all, basically all there is. Even the code for attachment, it's really just describing um, you know, what, what I just um, mentioned. It's uh, backed by this table. It belongs to a record, polymorphic, so maybe the cat, and then it belongs to the blob. It creates the association. And so, uh, summing up, these are the main classes. You have the service that moves the bytes. You have the blob that has a reference to where the bytes were stored so that you can fetch that. And then you have the attachment that connects this blob to the original model. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, like the third act where we like put everything together. How does it all fit together? At the beginning, I showed you Active Storage is pretty easy to use. You just add a few lines of code. Then I mentioned the main classes, but how does it all work together? There is still some magic there that it's not pretty clear. And so that's what I'm going to show you now. And this code uses some techniques that are actually all over the Rails code base. And so you know, if you learn some of these things, that they might even be useful if you look at other parts of Rails or even your own code base. So, I think the perfect starting point is when I said, well, all you need is to add this line of code. So how does this single line of code add this whole behavior to your cat? It's, it's pretty powerful. And even before that, where does this method even come from? Because here we are inside an active record base. Active record doesn't have, has one attached as a method. So how did this method end up there? Well, the answer is that uh, Active Storage is an engine. And uh, uh, James Adam yesterday had a talk called Here's to the Crazy Ones, where he talked about engines for uh, the entire talk. So it's a really uh, good talk to uh, watch. On YouTube, you have the chance. Um, Active Storage is an engine. So as, as an engine, uh, it has um, initializers. And this is how this code works. This is inside Active Storage. What this is saying is, Whenever a Rails app is loaded, is, in, is initialized, active support on load active record, what that line is saying is whenever you're loading a Rails app, when you're loading active record, st stop there for a second and extend active record with active storage attached macros. So it's loading active record with all the active record methods, where, find, and so on. And then once it's loaded, extend it with active storage attached macros which is a module inside Active Storage, and one of the methods is has one attached. And so that's where that method comes from. That's how Rails is able to uh, extend, uh, and in this case, we're extending Active Record with Active Storage, but this pattern is really used all over. Okay, so that's how the method ended up there. Now, what is this method? This method is actually pretty long, and I didn't, put the whole method here because it can be scary. It just stopped at the first like five lines. But even just the first line is like class eval code. What is this? Maybe you don't write this type of code normally in your um, application. So let me explain what this is. When you uh, say a cat has one attached picture, suddenly your cat has a method called picture. This is pretty similar to when you say in Active Record, user has many roles, and then you have user.roles. So you have this new method just because you called something else. Of course, Rails cannot know at the very beginning has, has one attached what. It has to take that name that you're giving it and then 
define methods with that name. So this is what's happening here. This class eval is taking that name that you passed to has one attached, and it's using that to define a bunch of methods with that name. For instance, if name is picture, this code becomes a little easier to understand because you said picture, now you have a method called picture equal, and then another method called picture, and so on. So this is really um, sort of met metaprogramming in Rails, but, and it also helps you when you debug to go to the correct line, but this is really what it's doing. It's defining new methods based on the name that you have given. Now this picture equal is the method that it's called when you uh, set a picture, so when you attach a picture to a cat, and it's calling picture.attach. Picture itself is another method defined by has one attach. So this is the picture equal. This is the picture method. Um, picture is an instance of an internal class called attached one. Uh, it's, it's, uh, this is what picture is. The good thing about this is you, know, you can go and look at the code of attached one, but it just gives you an idea of how really object-oriented um, this active search is, it's not like in injecting, uh, I don't know, loading modules. It's really based on a bunch of classes, and these classes are pretty small. So if you go inside, you're going to see that they're not uh, too hard to understand. So this is an instance of this attached one, and this is the, the class that has a method called attach. And this method, it's basically doing two things. First, it's creating a blob from your attachment and the blob then calls the service to move the bytes, and then it's creating the active storage attachment. So we go back to where we were before. Because you are attaching a picture to a cat, first it's creating a blob, and then it's uh, you know, storing the bytes with the key, and then it's creating the attachment. So it, go, it goes back together to where we were. And this is, uh, you know, I hope that like with this talk I'm really like, letting you know that you can just go and look at the code base and uh, both learn and you know, possibly contribute. As I was saying before, this uh, library is, is pretty new and uh, it's open to uh, you know, suggestions. Maybe there are some issues. Uh, something else you can do if you go to the GitHub page of Rails, there's the issues tab. Uh, all the issues are normally tagged. So if you see the tag active storage, you might you know, want to explore and see um, what happens in the code. The code base is not really that big. Uh, you know, we heard about Journey before, that's a little bigger as a code base, but if you, especially if you're new to Rails, I think Active Search is a good place to start. Active Support is another good place to start. Active Job as well, they're all pretty small. So just give it a try. I just want to give another like round to explain again all this uh, process of um, attachments, blobs, and services. Uh, this is another method that um, Active Storage adds when you have has one attached picture. It's this after destroy commit. So think about it. If you, you know, destroy a cat, which you should never do, but if you, <laughs> <laughs> if you decide to destroy an instance of a cat from your database, and that cat had a picture, you probably want to delete that picture. So if you had a picture on S3, it doesn't need to be there anymore. And maybe it shouldn't, you know. A cat picture maybe can stay there, but if it's an attachment of a document and you delete it, you don't want the attachment to stay there. So this is also something that Active Search implements with this after destroy commit, uh, picture purge later. After destroy commit is a callback of Active Record, and it's saying do something after the instance was destroyed, um, it's, it's after destroy commit, so it doesn't run inside the transaction of the deletion. If it was just after destroy, it, would, uh, it might be blocking your, your database. So let's see what happens when you destroy an instance of a cat. It's calling picture.purgeLater. PurgeLater, it's saying, if there is an attachment, call attachment.purgeLater. Now attachment, you remember it was in the database, so it's destroyed, but then it's also calling blob.purgeLater. The blob is actually calling a job. It's saying, well, I don't really need to delete this file in real time. I mean, I can just let an active job do this like five seconds from now. When the job runs, it's calling blob.purge. 
blah, blah, purge, it's, it's destroying the blob, and it's calling delete. Delete is calling the service. Let's say, can you actually delete this file? And then the service, for instance, the disk service, it's calling file.delete. And so this is really the entire flow. And you know, I just wanted to show this again just to you know, demonstrate some, some properties of active search. For instance, in this case, really separation of concerns, like the cat doesn't know that the file is even on S3. It's just going step by step. So uh, if I haven't said it yet, I think this library is really awesome. And <laughs> the code is really elegant, so check it out. Uh, to conclude, there is more. And I didn't have time to go through that. But um, some of the other things that you might want to explore. First of all, Active Storage is not just a Ruby gem. It's also a JavaScript library. The code is, is in the same place. And the reason why there is a JavaScript library is because sometimes you don't want to upload your files to the Rails app. You just want to upload them directly from your browser to S3, for instance. Especially maybe if you use um, Heroku, uh, you, you don't want to use the storage of Heroku. You just want to upload them to S3. So Active Storage includes a JavaScript library to do that. You include the JavaScript file in your, in your view. And it takes care of uh, creating a blob. So you have a key. And then with this key, the file is uploaded to S3. And then this is the key that uh, you can then use to retrieve this image. The only thing that changes is the order in which the blob is created and the image is stored. Something else that I found you know, useful is um, every time you use active storage in your Rails log, you're going to see that information like file was uploaded and so on. The way in which uh, this is done is using a library called Active Support Notification that you can uh, publish a message to and then subscribe. It's used all over Rails. So you know, if you find this and you don't know what it is, just check it out. It's pretty good. And then the last thing is um, Active Storage has a file called routes.rb. And I like that we tie back in with the previous talk about routes. Um, it has routes because imagine if you have a file, then you want to display that file in the browser. So it needs a URL. So this URL for a file needs to be generated. The nice thing about this file is that, about routes.rb, is that it's using a couple of methods in the router that were just added in Rails 5.1, the methods direct and resolve. So in, in your router, you can have uh, you know, resource, get, post, but you can also use these two methods. And maybe you have never seen these methods used in a real app. So if you want to check them out, they are in Active Storage. And uh, this concludes my talk. All the slides uh, are available there. And really, I don't know, give it a try and uh, let us know what you think. I am a member of the Rails Issues team, which means if you open an issue in Rails, I can you know, look at it and, and check it and maybe merge or comment. And uh, even if you want to mention me uh, on GitHub, you know, I am Claudio B on GitHub, so you can do that if you open a PR. It will make me happy. <laughs> and uh, that's it. I'm going to be here for the rest of RaceConf. So if you have any questions, just uh, come find me. Thank you. <laughs>